the uh, Red Cross liaison uh, for the San Luis Obispo Emergency Communications Council. I've been a ham since uh, 2006. Um, I have a general class license. And anyway, I'm uh, going to be talking today about generators. Now, uh, so I'm going to quickly go through what I talked about back in 2014 here, and then um, we're going to go through the specifics. Um, as you can see here, the question, one of the questions is, are you planning to purchase a generator? I strongly recommend that you purchase an inverter generator. You can see they're small, they're lightweight, and most importantly, they're fuel efficient and quiet. Oh, what? Thank Welcome you. To I don't need your help. <laughs> yeah. okay. That is such a friendly message. Yeah, right. Right in the middle of what you're trying to do. Like, notice me. Okay, so we have three significant factors. Uh, we have the California Air Resources Board, we have carbon monoxide, and a technology to avoid. Okay, so California Air Resources Board. Um, this is any fuel-powered uh, <laughs> small thing in California. It has to be approved by CARB, the California Air Resources Board, and they actually will prevent things from being shipped into the state. Um, so it's really important that you make sure uh, if you're going to buy a generator, it must be approved by CARB. And the, basically that means that it meets certain emission standards. Okay, here's our big problem, carbon monoxide. Uh, and uh, I used to work for FEMA, and unfortunately, uh, there were far too many times we got the email. I was, I was working on um, post-disaster recovery for Hurricanes Rita, Wilma, and Katrina uh, about people that operated their generators even in their garage or near their, uh, near their residence. And unfortunately, we uh, lost several people during those disasters because people were not aware of the dangers of carbon monoxide. Um, so that's why we have, I just wanted to make sure we covered this point. Uh, and then technology to avoid. Well, I just happened to bring it along because I think it's, uh, it is a, a useful in its right place. And that is, uh, nowadays, you can get small uh, uh, inverters. This is a really small inverter. It operates on a Ryobi battery. These are very popular batteries. This is a, a four amp hour battery. Um, I use this for powering. We have a, a booth at the farmer's market in San Luis Obispo. And so I use this to power. We have some uh, green lights. I brought uh, holiday lights today because uh, we're still sort of in holiday season. Um, these are just normal line-operated uh, lights. And as you can see, it works fine for this specific purpose. Now, you would, the, what we want you to avoid is never hooking this up to your house wiring. Uh, and the reason why is because this output point right here actually is floating above real ground, um, and it's actually uh, around... When you look at it on a peak-to-peak -peak basis, it's close to 100, uh, it's over 100 volts. So uh, it could uh, kill you very simply. So because that's the way this, this technology works, um, it, it is great if you're keeping it isolated from uh, everything else, like the application here on the table. But, uh, but again, please never... Hook this up to your house wiring uh, if you're going to use an invert this kind of battery operated inverter. Uh, this also produces a simulated sine wave, which means we don't want to really hook it up to an old um, uh, transformer that's designed to run at uh, 60 hertz because uh, it will overheat that transformer because of all the harmonics. Okay, so why do we want to use propane? This again, another really important concept. First of all, in a disaster. The, thing, the first thing that's going to run out, uh, is, if you can get it, uh, is gasoline. Um, and so um, propane, on the other hand, has incredible shelf stability, at least 10 years, probably a lot longer than that. Um, and they're less likely to be exhausted uh, during uh, any kind of at least moderate scale disaster. Um, a 20-pound cylinder like the one I have outside 
um, is uh, equal to five gallons of gasoline. And of course, you should purchase at least two storage containers. Why? Anybody? Why do we want to have two storage containers? We, no, we want to be able to take one, we want to be able to continue to use one while we're getting the other one refilled. Question over here. Yeah. How are you going to get propane when there's no power? Well, some, don't work. <laughs> some places actually do have generators. Well, yeah, and, and so, so, and of and course, a lot of the, a lot of the like when I, where I worked at uh, Calpine, we got our propane from the, from the uh, packer next door, and he just had a big pig up on stilts. There was no pump at all. He just yeah. picked it up and filled well, it. Yeah, but you still can't fill it full. Yeah, it was as a it a pressurized. Well, it, it, like the pressurization. Longboat does not have any. Okay. Backup sources of power in the city. Wow. To get propane or gasoline. Well, Home Working Depot with one station. Home Depot has a lot of pre-filled cylinders. Yeah, that's a, that. Yeah. They're, they're, They'll go they're, fast. But, yeah. How is it? They don't have no power, so they can't sell them to you. Yeah, they can. They that, that thing. They'll manually. manually. And yes. How does Home Depot prepare generator? natural gas? Because in my neighborhood. Okay. So. Okay. So the question was how to how to compare propane to natural gas. Well, the. Natural gas that you get in your home is at really low pressure. Yeah. Its pressure is typically on the order of like six, inches of water. Six to fifteen pounds. Roughly uh, five pounds. Uh, how much? No. no. Uh, roughly five inches. Five inches. Yeah, yeah. At your water. at your residence. At your residence after the regular gas water. Yeah, it's, it's like right. It has six pounds. It's really. Yeah, I've told, been told it's equal to about five pounds. No. Okay, but. Let's okay. have one speaker at a time, please. All right, thank you. Um, the, the, the point that I want to make about natural gas is it's much lower pressure than propane. So the thing is, it's much less energy dense. Uh, and that is uh, an important consideration for what we're going to be talking about at the very end here. Um, so anyway, you can learn more about propane by going to propane101.com. It's a wonderful resource. Um, and then uh, here's uh, some examples of propane power generators. This is on top of uh, this is the Mount Low repeater. Um, and so it's got a big uh, propane tank. And of course, it can run all the equipment that's on top of uh, Mount Low, which of course includes for first responders. Um, and uh, we also, uh, SLOIC has stuff co located there. <coughs> okay, number two. Uh, this is the Target store uh, in San Luis Obispo. Um, and you can see it's got, uh, this was actually taken a few years ago. Uh, it's got some propane tanks, and then it's got a nice Generac uh, industrial power. Why does Target on, on, uh, on uh, Los Angeles Valley Road have to have this? Anybody? Why do they have to have Frozen it? Frozen food laundering. Nope. No, it's actually just for safety. The store doesn't have windows. So that means it's pretty much a 100% chance that when you lose power, you're going to not have any lighting. Yeah. And that's, gonna, that's definitely a, a big safety issue. Uh, but I think they also can harden. You know, I've, I've actually done some uh, IT work there. Uh, so they've got some pretty sophisticated electronics that uh, can be backed up. Uh, but anyway, that's propane power generator number three. Number, uh, number three is at ECC9, which is uh, where I call home as far as uh, being a ham. Uh, this is the American Red Cross chapter for San Luis Obispo County. Um, and we have a propane powered 8 kilowatt generator, gener generator uh, which can provide power for our amateur radio equipment, among other things. So, here's case number one. You already own a gasoline powered generator. So this one's the one I purchased, um, and I didn't understand at the time I bought it, why did the price go down so sharply? And the answer was revealed a few months later as uh, inverter-type generators started to come onto the market and, and have some really great price points. So anyway, so I got this uh, roughly 5 kilowatt generator for 400 bucks from Costco. Wow. Um, it is a good price. It was a good price at the time, but it's got some really big um, disadvantages. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, I had to buy the tri-fuel kit, so that added another $200. That really doesn't matter what generator you get, 
This is about what you're looking at for U.S. carburation. They've become the market leader in supplying propane conversion systems. Uh, however, the other disadvantage, I've got to cut the frame to add in all the stuff that's necessary in the approach they have here. So I have to have a propane regulator, reduces the propane so it can be actually be used, and then um, also there is a, a safety system, which is this device right here, and the idea is that this is actually looking for a vacuum, which of course means that the engine is running. If there's no vacuum, this stops the flow of propane. Yeah. And that's a very important safety feature. So uh, again, you, you want to make sure that your kit has that safety device in it. Um, and so propane supply, again, this is just a picture of uh, my propane tank. Um, the kind I have, as you'll see outside, has a fuel level indicator on it. These are available from Costco. And if you're going to buy more propane tanks, I have right now five, um, make sure you get this. I mean, this is such a, it's such a simple thing, but you know how much propane you got in your tank. Um, and then, of course, a hose to connect uh, to the regulator. Um, so then, with that particular big generator, which, again, I brought out here and demonstrated, it's really noisy. So I also purchased an uh, auxiliary muffler. And then had to have adapt it so that it would work. Uh, here's a good old JB Weld steel stick. I'm sure everybody here that mucks with stuff is familiar with how wonderful steel stick is. Um, it, act, it can actually tolerate uh, moderate exhaust temperatures. Um, and then put this all together. So there's my adapter. Um, and then we had a, a we could put a, an enclosure around the thing. And then. This is the way, way to do it, which is to get an inverter generator like this little guy right here. Um, um, so here was an example from Ryobi. Uh, I think the price points come down a little bit from that. Here's the Honda. This is what uh, Slovak uses. I think, how many do we have, Tom? Slovak has one, and John's got one. And you can't buy the E2000 anymore. It's an E2200, which okay. is even better for propane because it's got the fuel cutoff built into it. So yeah. For the same price or a little bit less now, right. it's an EU2200. Right, so, so again, the good thing is that this technology has become uh, much more uh, commonplace and, of course, competition. Um, so you can look at more information. Here was information on how to do the, this propane conversion. Um, so what else do you need? Heavy-duty twist lock extension cord. Why twist lock? Because this thing vibrates. So we're yeah. going to make sure you've got a, a good connection. Uh, generator connection box. If you're really serious, you're going to be setting up a transfer switch in your home or shack or wherever. Um, and again, that's a, 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 a code requirement. Uh, Anti-theft devices. This is a big problem, unfortunately, uh, because when there is an outage, your generator will broadcast it its... Uh, it'll <laughs> announce itself. Uh, and unfortunately, there will be people who are opportunistic and will steal it. So... Uh, and theft devices, uh, even Consumer Reports has raised this issue, set a, like a bolt in concrete or something like that, and put a chain on it, um, and of course a cover if it's stored outside. So, uh, and um, anyway, so there's, uh, this was the old uh, thing, so we're going to just close out of that and go to the new uh, presentation here. It's faster. Than, oh, it's going into the browser. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to let yeah, it. Yeah. Close the browser and right-click on it. Open it and it. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Come on. The Windows lucky. somehow defaults. Close all. Thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, here it is anyway. Well. Was. Okay. Yeah, right, there it was. Right, yeah. Right-click. Yeah. Wait a little longer. Okay, open with. That's it. There we go. That'll work. So again, Microsoft is here to uh, to insert its. Bother uh, us. Yes, bother us in lots of ways. Um, and they're really good at it. Okay. 
All right, so here we go. So this was a presentation I gave uh, back uh, in 2018. Um, so here again, this was a, a slide from the full presentation showing it actually we have the generator. I feel the, fed, fed the output of a generator into a, 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 a UPS yes. and then used the UPS to run the thing. Um, right. So what's the disadvantage of this big generator? It's, it operates, uh, it produces its alternating current by essentially running at some, uh, some multiple of 1800 RPM. Yeah. It's fixed uh, speed. Whereas with, a, with an inverter type generator, if you have very modest loads on them, uh, the RPM really drops down because what you're doing is you're taking the, um, the AC, you're rectifying it, and then using that rectified output uh, as an input to an inverter, which is why they're called inverter generators. Um, so. The big advantage uh, is, again, the, as you're going to see, this thing is really fuel efficient in comparison. Um, so, again, there was our, our cut that we showed you before. Uh, so here we are. Um, and, again, you're gonna, if you shop around, uh, it should be between 200 to 250 bucks. Everybody can get that. Yeah. Um, it's very, very inexpensive. And you can see, I like to date things when I buy them, so this was April 2017. Um, Okay, and moving on. Um, so here's uh, a schematic. It's a, I've, I've, I've got a cleaner copy for those that are interested. Uh, again, quite sophisticated, but I've described it in block form how it works already. Um, and the, but the problem is, this thing is so tiny. It's really, I, I believe that initially it was a engine that was used to power like a chainsaw or some small application like that. So everything is really, really tiny. So the Venturi on the thing, which is uh, this little thing right here, uh, is only 0.41 inches in diameter. That's too small for the motor snorkel technology that uh, U.S. Carburation has come up with. Uh, so, uh, but I looked at the, how the thing was built, and there was, there's a gasoline port, and the gasoline injection port in this, what they actually do is they've taken like a, a brass and pressed it. And so the liquid gas goes into this little port and gets vaporized in there. It's warmed up a little bit, I guess. Um, and so I said, hey, that's a perfectly good place to put in propane. Um, so I disconnected uh, the connection to the gas tank. Um, I've also just for, th for security, I glued the gas cap closed so nobody can put gas in there. Um, um, Department of Redundancy Department, that's a definitely a good thing. Um, oh, come on. So then I attached the, in the place of the gasoline, I put the propane feed line, which is this right here. And then we have a little, what's called a power block here. I don't know if it's shown on the next slide. Uh, yeah, here it is. Propane, so the propane feed line passed through the cabin. I just had to, I think I used a soldering iron, a good old thermoplastic, went right through it, and uh, then, and I tried to make it so there was nothing, no sharp edges, because yes, this, even this vibrates. So you want to have something that uh, uh, doesn't uh, chafe your, your, uh, your hose. And so then I have uh, this thing just running a, a very modest load. We'll be using this load later on today uh, when we actually uh, use this thing with propane. Um, and okay, and here's the big advantage: this thing with a modest load, based on what I'm able to calculate. And of course, I haven't run it that long, but it should run for about 24 hours continuous with uh, uh, with that uh, so-called 20-pound cylinder. Uh, that's a big, big advantage. Um, and of course, uh, typically what you're going to do uh, is use the charge up batteries, run, run off batteries at night so that your neighbors are happy, uh, if you live like I do in a mobile home park, um, and then uh, you know, continue in the morning. Um, so uh, now then, we're going to just quickly talk about the alternative which is, 
This is heavily promoted by fossil fuel interests, and I'll explain why it's heavily promoted by fossil fuel interests. This is just a uh, ordinary uh, solar cell, and um, Californians for Green Nuclear Power is an intervener before the Public Utilities Commission. We actually looked into the performance of California solar, and we found its percent on time or capacity factor is only about 20%. Yeah. That's the big disadvantage. Yes? Since, since the first January, it's a law now when you build a new house that has solar panels on it. Right, and to me, that that's like putting tits on a bull. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, it is going to sell a lot of natural gas, which is really what it's all about. Right. Because you need to have something to compensate for the intermittency. Now, so what we'll be able to do with this thing is I can plug the solar cell. It's got a, it's got a nice little uh, uh, thing where I can just, it's got uh, power poles on the side of it. So I can just plug this in and use this to charge the, this, uh, this lithium ion battery in here. But what are we talking about when we talk about the cost of that system to charge up so that we do have a system that has that can be available or what's called dispatchable. Well, uh, for this thing, rough round numbers, to store one kilowatt hour, you would of course have to buy a few of these things because this stores 400 watt hours. It works out to about $1,000 per kilowatt hour to store the energy. Um, Tom, do you have some, have you run some numbers on your Tesla systems uh, as to how much they go for in terms yes, of... About 50 cents a kilowatt hour. 50 cents a kilowatt hour. With no, that's... Or no, 50 cents a watt hour, I'm sorry. Watt 50 hour. cents a yeah. watt hour. Okay, yeah. so yeah. then... dollars a kilowatt hour. 500... So about half the price of a battery. Excuse me? About half the price of the, of the carry-around lithium batteries. Like the Battleborn is a 100 amp hours at 12 volts, and it's, okay. a, yeah. it's about 1000 bucks. So the Tesla Powerwall is... Uh, $6,500 for 13 kilowatt hours, so that's... Ooh, yeah. Yes, but again, you're talking, if you look at the amount of energy in that, <laughs> that, uh, that propane tank outside and compare it to the amount of energy inside the Tesla Powerwall, you can see that the power density uh, is much higher for the case of the propane. But of course, with the downside of having emissions. Um, yeah. So... Um, anyway, the this is the real problem with solar, is that just it's really expensive to store energy. There was an article um, in the Wall Street Journal back in July when they were talking about PG&E's very famous public safety power shutoff, and they highlighted a fellow that had put in not one, not two, but three power walls in his home so that he could have uh, enough power to run for you know a day or two. Um, and the total cost of his system was fifty-eight thousand dollars. Wow. So that's the th that's the real important issue about integrating solar. If we want to do it the right way, not not the way that the gas companies want us to do it, uh, which is you buy the solar and then you inefficiently dispatch the uh, the, the generators. Uh, that actually back up the thing. So you end up burning more gas than if there was solar on the system. Yes, question. Uh, a little uh, off the subject, possibly. Uh, this particular model of, uh, uh, I'll call it a generator that you have here. The Sawa Oki here. Uh, uh, no, the... the uh, Ryobi? Uh, yeah. The Ryobi. This guy here. This is a... a no, no, no. The, the, the inverter. The, the inverter. sportsman. Yeah. Sportsman. Okay. Do they make that in a larger size? Uh, they now have uh, a thing where you can parallel two units together. So okay. essentially you can get two kilowatts. Yes? John, uh, there's an outfit in Ontario, California. Okay. That puts out Duramax generators. Okay, Duramax, all right. I got a 4.5 hooked up to an emergency. My house is wired with a word emergency outlet. So right. Okay. Not into a PG and E. Right, right. And I've got five tanks. And that one tank will run that what I'm doing is keep my freezers, my refrigerators, right. and my Traeger cooker. Okay. 
powered up, and I do like we do in Europe. You go to bed when the lights go off in the sun. Right, right, right. So I don't need lights at night. I don't need television. I got uh, radio with uh, gets all the emergency frequency. Right. Hand crank. Okay. I don't need all that stuff. And well, it's well, three hundred and ninety dollars for the generator. Wow, that's that's a very impressive. Um, now, but is that an innovator generator? Huh? Is that Standard. an inverter generator? It's a regular generator running on propane, on right. gas. Okay, so here's the, so again, our issue is uh, it becomes more acute for applications like I have, where I'm cheek to jowl with everybody else in the mobile home park. Uh, the noise is really an issue. Now, your your solution is to to basically turn it off at night or Right? You're I only run mine eight hours in the daytime. There we go. And it, and it can basically cool off all your freezer and everything, and you leave it closed. So that, that is a solution. Uh, but the thing to also appreciate this modern, with this modern technology, uh, I mean, the amount of power that's required to put out fantastic amounts of light has really gone way down with LED technology. So, so um, you don't need to do the, uh, the, the, the everybody goes, uh, stop, stop doing what they're doing uh, if you have uh, some, some good LED lighting. Uh, so, yes? You said you need a mobile park, so how does that, what's the implications with propane tanks in your park? The, the, they allow you to have a barbecue. Yeah, they? that's what I'm saying, Mike. You know, I'm thinking the application is great for what you're using it for, but like, for instance, in my neighborhood with cul-de-sacs and a regular house, right. um, they go into 20 kW generators and they're all going to natural gas. Right. Now, if, say if somebody said, came here and said, hey, you know what, propane works better, and they want to put some uh, large propane tanks in Now, that's there. probably going to have to get, some, the, that may have to work with the HOA or... Yeah. Um, well, I don't, or, HOA or county code. Or, yeah, yeah. There, there, there are issues about large quantities of propane. So... Um, my, uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm being kind of subtle here today, wearing this uh, green shirt, Friends of Diablo Canyon. I brought along a few copies of an op-ed that, uh, or it's a version of an op-ed that's been submitted to the San Luis Obispo Tribune. I think I've got just about enough copies for everyone. I've got 25 copies here. Um, the real problem for California, and is, you know, why are we all here? Well, we're here to, because we think it's important to be prepared and to offer <coughs> the service to the community of our amateur radio. Now, um, why is that important? Well, you know, if you're not really <coughs> thinking too much, you say, well, hey, if there's a big disaster, I'll just reach for my cell phone. Uh -huh. uh, and the problem, of course, uh, again, uh uh, is the correct answer. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you look at the Nusqually earthquake, uh, which took place, it's, Nusqually is near Olympia, Washington, I think it was 2001. Um, it was a, the, the epicenter was not in a totally developed area, but it caused damage um, you know, in the area around Nusqually. Um, the phone network, that's wired and wireless, saturated 